example, if I'm targeting a CST, CST should be my mentor, should be my mentor, right? But if you want to be a very good coach without a CSE, then there are so many coaches out there. So that is all, that is up to you. What is your target? Based on the target, you have to choose your mentor. So, there are all uh, patterns, right? 
patterns of assumptions. Everyone have their own set of values and beliefs. Okay, so let me show you something then. How many of you know this company, Zappos? They were in news in the recent, recent past. Can someone tell me the story of this? How many of you know the story of Zappos? Yeah. They started with shoes and things like that. Yeah. So they are an online shoemaker initially, and then now they are everywhere. They became a big bazaar, like yeah. our thing. So I have seen so many times uh, Tathagat was also telling how Z Z Zappos, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a fan of him, so I watch his, most of his Facebook uh, conversations. So where uh, he was clearly highlighting what Zappos did. Yeah, so there is one word called holacracy. So, okay, J just read through this, the, the core values of Zappos. Just read, read through the core values of Zappos. These are the core values of Zappos. Okay, I'll show you something else. Now, there is a US, US government forest services. They also have the values. So you have seen uh, Zappos core values and US government forest services core values. Now, what's the difference? What's the difference between both of them? I can display it again, side by side. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, go ahead. But I see the difference between a traditional approach and an adventurous or I would say an innovative approach. Correct. Because for the US Forest Services, one number two says tradition. Yeah. And there they are like the immigration drive change. Yeah. Yeah. So there are so many differences, right? But the way how Zappos approached it. And, yeah. Exactly, that is that is the that is the most important one. Okay. So we have talked about the differences. Now so uh, there is a company called Strategy and which said that eighty six percent they saw they did a survey and they found that eighty six percent said that culture is critical to business success. And ninety six percent said that culture change needed. And 51% said that there is a major culture overhaul is needed. And there is a huge gap between awareness and action. We don't know what is really impacting our culture, our work culture. And that is what is creating all the chaos. We don't know something. Even though we know something, we don't want to act on something else. Right? So, what is an organization culture? Watch this video. I'll show you a video. And we. Thank you. 
conviction that I need to change Correct. and he need to that need yeah. that because so, everything else yeah, we talked about it we talked about leaders right leaders have to do the top down but for an organization tell me what change you need in your culture if I, if I go and ask an organization what change you need in your culture I need that I need this they'll tell you 10 10 20 problems and we we cannot attack all problems at a time right, right. okay so so what are we trying 
So I, I, uh, I'm going to um, show you a small framework. Uh, there is a guy called Tim uh, with whom I'm working on this framework. And uh, this guy and I, we were uh, doing this transition to Agile. We have this knowledge uh, body. So that is where we both are working together. And we have been trying this for the past two months. And uh, with, I mean, I don't want to guarantee that, uh, OK, uh, it will work in every environment or something like that. But the results are positive so far. And that is where uh, we were doing incremental changes, small, small changes. OK, so all we need is a common sense framework. Categories of performance culture. So I have read uh, this book, Stephen um, Covey, uh, Four Leadership Imperatives, and Lassie, Larry, sorry, uh, Jim Collins, Good to Great. And what we did is we isolated the performance culture operating drivers. So strategic and financial alignment, four process improvement, motivation and talent management, these are the four pillars of a good culture. And then everyone defined, all these three defined in, in their own way. So everyone has their own this one. And so then after that we prepared a culture roadmap. So if you want to do a cultural transformation, what is the culture roadmap? So it's a 10 step roadmap. I don't have time to discuss all the 10 steps today. But I'll show you the over, overview of it. So, so you evaluate and assess your current culture, what is your current culture, and then move on. There is a lot of engagement, and then you define values and behavior. We talked about what are the values. And um, then the engagement to define smart goals. So this is all what it is, the framework. It's a 10-step culture transformation roadmap. And how do we evaluate the current organization culture? We have a, um, a, a survey, plus we do a face-to-face -face interviews and we take some data. And then based on the data what we collected, we put your current culture in one of these. So yours is a reactive culture, or a functional culture, collaborative culture, or a high performance culture. So based on the data, whatever you uh, give us, uh, so you will be in one of your, and, and the levels are clearly defined. This is what I call it as culture maturity model. For an organization? For an organization. For an organization. Yeah, you can apply it to the team also, but unless you uh, clean it up at, at leaders and organization level, you cannot get it so easily at a team level. So, and then, so we have a phase one, reactive to functional. So we're build the foundation, and then phase two, expand the approach, and then phase three, go deep dive for a sustainable change. And after that, so, so what does that phase one contain? Define, align, and manage. And then the functional culture, and then phase two and phase three. So this will take a time. So we, every time we will see you like in which phase you are in. And this is the culture link. Every time we map your performance priorities to the values or behaviors, whatever you need to have. For example, if you, your company want a new culture, new customer growth. The discipline should be, a, I mean, the, the kind of behavior should be the teamwork. And if you want the more cash flow or a profit, then the discipline in your organization. So your performance priorities are mapped to what is the real values and behaviors you need to have in an organization. And those behaviors should be led by the leaders. leaders lead them as an example. And then the engagement at a team level under the leaders. So drafting the vision, one big thing is um, uh, the, the, the results. And we focus on your strengths and one, two, three weaknesses and key operating model changes. So for example, in the time period, one to six, months one to six, the performance priority is this, and the weakness is this. So we attack your weaknesses, and we build on your strengths. OK? So 
Yeah, I know. So this, is, this is one of its model. I mean, I don't know whether you have seen something like this in the past or not. But uh, this is this is uh, what we are. This is an evolving model for us. We are making still so many changes based on feedback. But this is the model we have at this point of time. So the culture lens. What we have is uh, performance priority, and we identify the values of your company. Many times, the biggest challenge is. Uh, the values are not converted into real behaviors. So I have seen every company will have values, right? Ethics and integrity, that, this, and all. So many values. I have seen one company where uh, in the reception, they have values, like seven values, and there is a waterfall over it. I was like, okay, your values are underwater. <laughs> so, so the, I mean, see, we need to be very serious about our values, and the leader should be Every time monitoring that, the values should be converted into real behaviors, the expected behaviors. There is a huge gap between drafting the values and getting converted into real behaviors. And every company has values, but they are only on paper. They are only on paper. So that, that's what it is. Values should be converted into expected behaviors. Okay, so build a culture muscle. This is at uh, teams level. So what you do is engage team in brainstorming into improvement, prioritize the team. For example, most of you have a problem with uh, the performance appraisals, right? So this is one problem which we try to attack. And we invited um, a lot of suggestions from the teams itself. Rather than we try to uh, build a process because we don't know we, uh, people in pain can give us more information than what we what we really try to build. So engagement is really important. We try to invite a lot of uh, suggestions from people like how a new performance appraisal should look like. And we got like three four very I mean so many ideas and we shortlisted three four and we made a model out of these three four uh, this one and we are piloting it. So engagement is really important if you really want a culture shift. Okay, and then track your strategic priorities. Priority one, priority two, priority three. And then this is the quad chart. Every six months, one month to six months, we prepare the top issues, the leadership, team support, uh, focus quadrant, and then the goals. So, and then we come across a lot of obstacles. There is so much of resistance. So much of resistance, people don't want to change. And what we do, some of the examples of obstacles, what we have come through is fear or hesitation about taking an action. This I see among the leadership. They don't want to take it. They want to play safe every day. And then, I am not in a position of authority to drive change. This is another obstacle. Struggles to obtain management support. And then, why are we doing this? Questions about the purpose. Because all the uh, stakeholders, all the teams are not aware of the purpose, the communication was not sent across. So there is a communication gap. And then, why are we doing this way? Questions about the process. I don't have time. Again, this is the leadership trait. Leadership, and, leadership uh, behavior. We are totally overwhelmed. You are stressed as a leader managing the load and follow. This is also one of your one of the leader's obstacles. With that, and then after this is the phase one, and then you move to phase two and phase three. And that is what it is. I mean, within this time, I can. But there is a deep uh, framework here. I wanted to. Um, but the, within this time, I can only give you an uh, overview of it. But I'm open for any questions. Are you saying that using this as a reference, we can uh, work on our organizations? Or are you saying uh, we engage with you uh, and you can help us? No, no. See, the, the, the biggest change is what, I'm, what I want to, to, to say is culture transformation is a gray area. Most of you don't know it. And we recommend this, transform your culture before you look at a J. Okay, so with your existing work culture, most of the time, a J might fail. 
So, so there are symptoms and root causes. How many of you? So let us say, for example, I think I, I gave, gave this example also. I have a cough today. The symptom is cough, but the root cause might be something different. That I have to go to a doctor and he'll give you a diagnosis. He'll write some tests, and then after the diagnosis only, you will be able to finalize what is the real root cause of my cough. Isn't it? So. When your root cause is a culture, the problem of your organization is a culture, then why do you attack something else? Try to fix the root cause. Yeah. 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 That, that, that is what we say. So, culture transformation is so much important. Most of us, we are in a command and control culture where we don't uh, have this perform high performance culture right yeah but you know uh, it's very for sure that it takes long time mm. five year time frame mm. even more at times and then stopping it and living in a command and control era just uh, and not shifting to something which looks at least sensibly better no it, no see i'll tell you right? culture shift each and every performance parameter. If you if you have like 20 problems and this is all I want to change. No, you cannot go that way. That will take five years or even more than that. So when you isolate one problem after the other, and then if you if the agile transformation lacks the culture transformation, then that will be more easy for adapting agile in an organization. Yeah. yeah. Differences. How how do you bring culture change? Does it does this model help? You? Yeah. So so most created culture at this point of time, but uh, we are also making this model shift for a group because uh, the company values are same whether you are in an, a different world or in, in 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 our world. Every company have their vision, mission, and the the core values, isn't it? The values are same, but the problem is. How do we really interpret them and how do we make a difference to our culture? So there are values, there are enacted values, which I call it as. Enacted values are something everyone pursues in a different way. And then they, they straight away look up to, to the leader. Let us say, for example, very simple, a, a discipline issue. I can take off and I don't apply leave. As simple as that. And then the leader has to check back and say that hey did you apply leave this is this is this is the problem this is the problem so if, if a leader doesn't even care for it or a leader doesn't even um, uh, understand the the discipline of uh, people applying leaves on time then everyone will take it easy i have one instance where uh, um, people will go on leave on their own without informing their managers also. See, they just they send a mail to their team. Okay, I'll be on leave so and so date. So th this is and and if that is ignored, this has been set as a culture in that organization. It, when when the incident repeats once, twice, thrice, this uh, this is a pattern. It, it becomes a pattern. So most of the most of the incidents, the culture is driven by someone on the top. See, did any transformation happen without the buy-in of your senior leaders? That is, this is I, I don't know, but uh, this is I'm, I'm I'm asking you. So even if you have to do something at a team level, also it has to go all the way from the it has to come all the way from the top, right? So yeah. See, I'll, I'll tell you. Online supervision is someone somebody taking things US or that, that, that is where the problem is. Unless there are so many problems, unless you fix the macro, you cannot really make an impact at a micro level. Yes, you can do so much at a team level, 
but there are real hardcore problems. For example, how do you fix the process of an appraisal? If, you, if, you, if your appraisal <coughs> process is not fixed at an organization level, how do you really promote a teamwork? You, cannot, you can never promote a teamwork, right? I think I would rather start giving some values in my project. Correct. But, but see, the, you should understand, yeah, you should understand what are the forces acting against Agile, what are the forces acting in favor of Agile, and you have to neutralize the forces that are acting against Agile. Again, I will not discuss But I, I don't know how many of you are really successful in that. Only focusing on team level and I don't focus on a bigger picture. I don't know how many of you are really but successful. But that again depends like if you, you know, calibrate that if you are success at our organization, we are like maybe in your team, your peer group, maybe the product team, all the functions, if you are able to make that change happen in even this area, whether your CEO knows or not, at least you are doing justice because you are not cribbing that my CEO or my leadership is not taking <coughs> action on uh, culture. You know, I, I know what you are sure. saying is also see, perfect. See, uh, see. Yeah. Out of my capacity, I will try to do something. Yeah. And I have burned myself also. Yeah. <coughs> because I will take one example that uh, I tried to implement Agile for a 90 member OBC I was heading. And I was at that time part of one of the, Indian, the largest Indian IT companies. And the company decided to go CMI. With Agile, I, I was not tracking the typical waterfall in CMI meat rates. So only I know how much heat I had to bear from my top management that why are you doing something which they don't understand and it is not in line yeah. with the organization's mandate yeah. of CMI. See, the team, there are fair chances that it will get roadblocked at some point of time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's going simple to what you are saying. Yeah. Yeah. One thought, of, one thought is that till the time, like Rakesh was saying, till the time you do not realize the value of yeah. it. Yeah. That is also important. Yeah. But then if you want to turn, you know, take it to a bigger level, it yeah. has to be talked out. Yeah. So, but do the senior leadership support something which you are doing or which they don't understand, you only understand? They will not understand. Actually, that's a fair point, but we cannot wait until leadership. Yeah. So, you, you can do something in your own thing. See, uh, the, the biggest problem is most of the, I'll, I'll also give you some of the examples. There are very good companies out there which they say an okay to Agile transformation yes. and then they start Agile transformation project managers with a delivery mindset. So they, they, they have this hook and crook delivery. Okay, I have to deliver this at any cost. Even the governance model, yeah. the metrics, yeah. uh, uh, you know, someone tracking as well. So there are 10 projects, 2 projects are agile, 8 are yeah. agile, and then you are rolling it up at a governance level and yeah. then... So, uh, and, and then added to the chaos, there is a scaling issue, right, at this point of time. Then you are scaling your problems also. Right. So you are not only, um, uh, I mean, scaling the agile, but you are also scaling your agile problems also. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, uh, in my organization, uh, uh, what we do is, uh, I mean, so that, that is where they have to look up for the leader, right? If a leader says that, okay, 
this is what you should do, otherwise within these many days you are going to get something, a notice or something like that. So when a leader sets a tone in one direction, people are aligned to that direction. If a leader just ignores it and keep it unnoticed, so it largely depends on the leader. Within the one organization itself, there are different types of leaders. So there is one leader which will act in different way, there is another leader which will act in a different way. And these all the leaders, they look upwards. They look at their leaders, isn't it? So that is what, that is where uh, I am telling you. So it, it is leadership driven. Yeah. One question. You started with uh, the behavior and values. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the behavior and values that you expect for a company to be agile? I don't want to give any answers. So most of the time people come with a problem and tell me a solution. Usually coaches will not give answers. No, no. Yeah, it is largely the context no, dependent. You, you said agile cannot go without changing the culture of the organization. But what agile requires as behavior and values, if you do not identify that and change that uh, or approach the senior executive for that, okay, you change these behavior and values in this organization, then only you can go for agile. Yeah, we do an assessment, right? In, in our roadmap, the first step is doing an assessment. Assessment of your culture. And then mapping it to what agile expects. So, uh, if, if the core values of Agile is the working software, the, um, the responding to change and all these are all the uh, uh, manifest of Agile. When you do an assessment, if you find anything contrary to your, uh, if your culture is contrary to your Agile manifesto, then probably we suggest some changes where this is where you have to change. Agile has its own manifesto, Agile principles, Agile values. Okay? So, when you are doing an assessment, you have to find out how the results are coming up. Then you map both of them and say that, okay, this is where we have to do some changes. Again, so agile adoption to an extent can trigger, but unless without the senior management involvement, it will not trigger. <coughs> yeah. I, I, I'll tell you, yeah, middle layer is always, middle layer always play the spoil sport. But let me tell you something, a change, as a change agent, uh, if I wanted to trigger something, it will be very difficult for me. But if an email comes from someone, everyone, for example, I'll give you a very simple example. I want teams to be uh, uh, co-located, I mean, not co-located. Within the same building itself, there is a testing team sitting on fifth floor, and development team sitting on fourth floor. This is the example. And I tried myself to change everything I did and I could not do it. Let me admit honestly. I could not do it. Then I go and talk to the VP of Global Product Development. And he's just sent an email. Next day, there are two people send me a meeting invite that we wanted to look at this. I need your suggestions. <laughs> what will you say about this? Hang on. So, so servant leadership is helping the teams achieving what they want. If the team's not willing to do that, you cannot do anything. Okay, maybe we can take uh, this. That's all. Uh, like this. Thank you. Thank you. You can tweet your teacher. Okay. So fine.